Back in 2017, when Ford was still in the early phases of creating an all-electric crossover, the story goes that there was a sketch shown to Jim Farley, Ford's current CEO. And he took one look at the sketch and he said, looks like a Prius. That's a joke. What are we doing? That's a direct quote too. Now I'm not saying that that is the exact moment that created the Mustang Mach-E as we know it now, but it does seem like at least for a moment there, Ford was going to take a very, very different direction with this car. Thankfully, they didn't. On one hand, there is a whole faction of muscle car enthusiasts that rip on this car for not being a real Mustang. And then on the other hand, there are a bunch of different people who consider buying it just because they want a cool looking EV. They might not even care that it says Mustang on it. And I don't wanna go down the rabbit hole of discussing whether or not this is a real Mustang or not, because we've been there. That was so 2019. But this one says GT on it. And historically, when Ford applies those letters to a vehicle, it means business. So in this Inside EVs review, we're going to discuss what the Mach-E GT is all about. We're also gonna see how it stacks up against a growing list of other fast EVs. And maybe we'll see somebody drive by in a rental Mustang because that's all you see around Southern California these days. Before we get too far along, let me invite you to please subscribe to the Inside EVs YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our new uploads. You can also follow us and interact with us on Twitter using the handle at Inside EVs. The GT sits at the top of the Mach-E range. It has the most horsepower, the quickest acceleration times, and in my opinion, it also looks the best. This car is finished in grabber blue paint, which admittedly is a color you can get on the rest of the Mach-E models too. But here on the GT, it looks fantastic. I mean, they might as well have called this attention grabber blue because in Southern California, where you see nothing but Model Y performance cars, this just stands out. It looks really good. There are a few things that set the GT apart from the rest of the Mustang range. Starting up here in the front fascia, this is unique. Uh, the grille specifically, it's finished in this sort of dark gray, almost black looking, uh, material. On the regular Mach-E, it's color matched and there's a thin black line that traces around it. It kind of looks like a mustache. The horse logo also illuminates at night, which is kind of neat. There's a much more aggressive front splitter down below. Let's park here at the wheels for a second. This is a 20 inch wheel design and it comes wrapped in Continental all season tires. The reason I'm stopping is because there's also a Mach-E GT Performance Edition, and on that car, you get a different 20-inch wheel wrapped in a Pirelli summer tire, so that's gonna give you a little bit more grip. Throughout the rest of the review, I'll go through the differences uh, that you get with the GT Performance Edition and whether or not that might be right for you. But this design is just really cool. I mean, this is a big aero plate right here. The wheel is extremely aerodynamic, but at the same time, there are these five cutouts. So you can actually see the red painted Brembo brake calipers. It just kind of looks distinct, I dig it. Follow me now to the back of the car, where you get a GT badge right in the middle that of course ties this car in with the combustion Mustang. We've gotten used to that for generations now. And underneath there's a slightly more aggressive rear diffuser, which helps out in performance driving scenarios. The GT stays consistent with the standard Mach-E in the cabin. You get the same 15.5 inch center touchscreen and accompanying drive modes. The GT adds in some more heavily bolstered seats along with copper trim that flows throughout the interior space. GT performance models get even more aggressive seating options in the front row. Okay, let's get this plugged in and topped off before we take it for a drive. So the Mach-E GT is only available with Ford's extended range battery pack. That's a 91 kilowatt hour battery. That is the usable capacity. This doesn't have the smaller offering that you can get in some of the other Mach-E models. The EPA rates this car at 270 miles of range in total. But if you wanna see what that looks like in more of a real world situation, you can click right here for our Inside EV's 70 miles per hour range test. In terms of charging, this car peaks at 150 kilowatts of power. Uh, what that means is what we've seen in our testing, zero to 80% in as quick as 48 minutes, that's pretty fast, and obviously 10 to 80% is gonna be even faster. So long story short, getting to 80% is a pretty quick endeavor in this car. So before we get out onto a fun canyon road, let's drive this on the highway for a little bit because that's still an important part uh, of a good EV crossover. What is it like in an everyday scenario? First thing I wanna point out is this has one pedal driving. So uh, it's really easy to turn on and off in the screen. It's either yes you want it or no you don't. 
you're somebody like me who does like one pedal driving, this is great. You take your foot off the accelerator, the car will slow all the way down to a full stop. If you don't like it, turn it off and pretend like it doesn't exist. It's of course a nice feature that will help extend the range of the battery too. Second thing is that this car has Blue Cruise. So let me turn that on for a second and explain what that is. We've driven it in a few of Ford's vehicles now. So as you can see, my hands, at least temporarily, are off of the steering wheel. Blue Cruise allows you to do just that in specific driving scenarios. You have to pay attention to the road the entire time, but when it's on a stretch of highway that the car thinks it's acceptable, you can take your hands off the steering wheel, it will slow itself down, speed itself up, and maintain its position in the lanes. So if you're driving to work on the same highway every day, this is a great opportunity to make your commute a little bit more relaxing. Now I've driven this car all through Canyon Roads quite a bit this week actually, and in doing so I've learned a few things. One is that you can have all the horsepower in the world, but that's not gonna take away the fact that a car weighs 5,000 pounds like this one does. And that's not just a criticism of the Mach-E GT, that's for any performance electric vehicle. They have huge amounts of horsepower and they accelerate quickly, but when you get into a situation where you need to turn or brake quickly, that's still a lot of weight to carry around. This car doesn't have all the horsepower in the world, but it does have a lot. 480 horsepower, 600 pound-feet of torque. That second number jumps to 634 if you go for the performance edition. Ford says this car will get to 60 miles per hour in as quickly as 3.8 seconds or 3.3 seconds for the performance. When you accelerate out of corners in this car, it's not hard to get those tires to chirp, especially with all that power under your foot. They start squealing a little earlier than I'd like them to. So if you're going to be driving this car uh, in performance scenarios more often than not, the summer tire might be a better option. Let's talk suspension. Now I just said on the highway that this car is really relaxed and compliant when you're driving it slow or just kind of cruising on the highway. But when the suspension gets loaded up into a corner, it kind of misbehaves a little bit more. You can just ask my producer back there who's almost hit his head on the ceiling two or three times now. There's a lot of vertical motion sometimes when you pitch it into a turn. Uh, more generously than the car wants you to, for example. And when it comes to the brakes, not only are these Brembos very sufficient in stopping this car, but the way Ford engineered and tuned the brake pedal is really, really good. Not every automaker can tune a brake pedal in an EV to be confidence inspiring. This car absolutely has that. The Mach-E GT's closest rival is, of course, the Tesla Model Y Performance which starts at $69,990. That's at least this week as we're filming this video. The car I'm driving right now, including all of its options and the destination charge, is $64,000. Um, and that's not including the federal incentives, which the Mach-E still qualifies for. So if you're just looking for a big electric crossover that also happens to be fun to drive, I think this is a better buy than the Tesla. It drives better for certain, has equal performance, and to me, the styling is a little bit more unique and stands out from the crowd, which is something we like to see in a performance car. The question then becomes, as we're adding more performance EVs to the bunch over time, the next couple of months, how does this thing hold up? I guess we'll have to wait and see.